On December 8th, Cube announced that they would be debuting a multinational girl group in the first half of 2015. The group had been given the name CLC, and it was revealed that the girls had been training under the company from 2 to 4 years each. The day prior to the announcement, one of the members, Sorn, made an appearance on CBS's special program, When Charles Meets Chulsu, where she showed her daily routine. It was also revealed that the group had held non-profit street performances to help children with disabilities and that they've been volunteering and donating since they were trainees. On March 9th, 2015, Cube announced that the group will be debuting on March 19th, as well as unveiled the first teaser in which five girls can be seen covering their faces. As the days went, more teasers were posted and the girls were introduced. Sorn, Jujing, Songhyun, Jeon, and Songhee would be the official members of CLC. On March 19th, they made their official debut with the mini album First Love. The album had five songs, including the promotional single Pepe. <laughs> which they performed for the first time on M Countdown alongside the B-side First Love. The album included production and lyrics from Double Sidekick and BTOB's Jung Il Hoon, and part of the choreography was created by Ray. At their debut showcase, the members revealed that all the proceeds of the album would be donated to children with, with development disabilities. The debut was not really successful. The album sold around 5,277 copies in Korea and peaked at number 11 on the Gaon album chart. Pepe sold 34,690 downloads and peaked at number 143 on the Gaon digital chart. In the K-pop fandom, there is this misconception that CLC's debut flopped because the market was oversaturated with cute concepts, and this is not really true. I think that this notion exists because CLC's fandom is mostly international. But if you look at the releases that happened the six months leading up to CLC's debut, this is what you get. from seeing the releases from the six months prior to their debut, you can see that the popular concepts were girl crush, sexy, and pure, with the latter being the dominant one after the explosion of sexy concepts of the early 2010s. None of the songs previously mentioned look or sound like Pepe, with the most similar sound being drama by Nine Muses. I think that the concept did affect the success of the group, but not because the market was oversaturated with the concept, but because the concept didn't fit either the Korean or the international market. You see, to me, Pepe is kind of like drama by Nine Muses. It's retro and slightly sexy, and K-pop had been dominated by the sexy concept since 2012. The concept was on its way out in Korea, which explains the explosion of pure concepts in 2015 and cute concepts in 2016. On the other hand, once international fans saw pink, bows, and the slightest bit of ego, they immediately categorize the concept as cute. And the cute concept has never really been popular internationally, which was the audience the Cube had in mind when they created CLC. Less than a month later, on April 8th, the group released 18 as a digital single. The song got 8,193 downloads and peaked at number 370 on the Gaon digital charts. Two months later, on May 20th, Cube announced that the group will be having their first comeback on May 28th with the mini album Question. The mini album had five songs, which included the promotional single Like. <laughs> Now, something I didn't mention earlier is that there was a bit of controversy over the lyrics of Pepe. 
with some people, and by people I mean men, claiming that the lyrics were feminist and anti-men. I'm guessing that Cube heard these complaints and that's how we got Like, because Like is the complete opposite of their debut. The song is really, really, really cute. They turn the ego to 100, not only in the performances, but also in the singing. And this really would be the beginning of the ever-changing concepts of CLC. This led to CLC losing some of the fans they had gathered from their debut who had no interest in something like Like. Question sold 4,634 copies, less than their debut, but peaked a little bit higher at number 9 on the Gaon album chart. Like got 21,104 downloads and peaked at number 173 on the Gaon digital chart. As part of the promotion for Pepe and Like, the girls premiered three reality shows, CLC's Love Chemistry in March, CLC's Queen Game in June, and CLC's Beautiful Mission in July. They also performed at multiple festivals throughout the year, including Cube's Festival in Shanghai and the Dream Concert. On February 24th, 2016, Cube announced that the group would have a new comeback and the two new members would be joining the group. It was later revealed that those two new girls would be Elki, a girl from Hong Kong that was already known in her home country for her modeling and appearances on dramas, and Elmbin, a Cube trainee that was at the time competing in Produce 101 Season 1. In theory, this was a great idea. First off, LK was supposed to make the group more appealing for international fans. Remember, the idea for this group was to create a multinational girl group and yet all but one member were Korean. Secondly, catering to China has never been a bad miss this move for K-pop companies. Chinese fans are known for spending a lot of money in groups. And thirdly, in theory, the group was supposed to get all of the fans all of the people that were voting for Elming on Produce 101 to buy their music. It was a winning situation, except that none of that happened. You see, while it's true that Chinese fans have no problem spending a lot of money to support the idols they like, especially if the idols are Chinese, being Chinese is not enough. Companies have to promote the idols and their groups in the country by getting them commercials, putting them in variety shows, or at the very least, releasing Chinese versions of their standard songs, but Cube never did any of that for CLC. Maybe this wasn't entirely Cube's fault, because the relationships between China and Korea at this time, especially in relations to K-pop, were not very good. They were very strained. So maybe promoting in China was not a good idea. Maybe it would have been a waste of time and money because maybe they wouldn't have succeeded, but Cube never even attempted it, is what I'm trying to get at. The other issue was Elmbin, because while she had gotten very consistent ranking on Produce 101, the second Cube announced that she would be joining a new group, people got mad. Fans of the show had no interest in their peaks joining pre-existing groups and the fact that she had been announced to be in the group when the show wasn't over yet led people to believe that she was just using the show for publicity and had no real interest on being a member of IOI. Cube actually had to explain that Elmin would be joining the group only if she didn't make it into the top 11 at the end of the show. Otherwise, she would just promote with the group from the show, but by then it was too late and Elmin ended up getting eliminated from the show before the final. But the show must go on, and on February 20th, the, the group had their first comeback at Seven, kind of. Elmbi was not allowed to promote with the group due to her contract with Mnet, and her scenes had to be edited out of the music video. So they only promoted at Six. The album Refresh had five songs, which included the title track High Heels and the digital single 18. So what you wanna do? High Heels was a bit of a mix between Pepe and Like, the best of both worlds, if you will. The song had that retro sound from their debut, and their voices were back to normal, but the overall styling, lyrics, and dancing was full of ego and cuteness. I guess Cube was trying to take the people who like Pepe and the people who like Like and force them to coexist. But that didn't work, and the album only sold 2,737 copies. That is a loss of about half in comparison to their previous comeback, but they did chart better this time as the album peaked at number 6 on the Gaon album chart, and High Heels sold 14,278 downloads and peaked at number 120 on the Gaon digital chart. 
In March, Cuba announced that the group will be debuting in a foreign country, not China, so that they could use Elki's popularity, and also not Thailand, so that Soren could finally promote there. But no, it was Japan. It would be an odd choice because Japan is the second largest music market in the world, but the group had no Japanese member. So maybe for some people that doesn't make a lot of sense what they would promote there. But their senior group, BTLB, another cube group, had a huge amount of success in the country. So that's why I believe that they were pushed to promote in Japan. The group debuted with the Japanese version of High Heels. The album sold 2,599 copies and peaked at number 23 on the Oricon chart. On May, Cube announced that the group would have another comeback on June of 2016 and finally would be able to promote a 7. Their album Nuclear had 6 songs, including the promotional single No O O, which was produced by Shin Sendon Tiger. <laughs> The album also had June's debut as a writer in the songs What Planet Are You From, Day by Day, and It's Too Late. Nuclear would be their first release to actually gain sales in comparison to their previous album. It sold 4,593 copies and peaked at number 16 on the Gaon album chart. No O sold 17,484 copies on the Gaon digital chart and peaked at number 144. No O -O had similar concept to High Heel. It was cute, a little bit retro and fun, and it worked. More people bought the album. On June 16th, Cube announced that the group would be having their first Japanese comeback with the album Chamisma. This album had three versions, which included a music video for the song Chamisma, featuring Jo Gil Hoon from BTOB and DVDs of the girls getting ready for their comeback. The album also had four original songs, Chamisma, Sukidoki, Chocolate Spice, and School Heaven, as well as a Japanese version of 123. The album sold 4,775 copies and peaked at number 16 on the Oricon chart. This would be the last time the girls would promote in Japan as they never did anything else in the country. After this, it was silence. The girls didn't do anything else for the rest of the year except for one performance at the DMC Festival in October. And I would love to tell you that this hiatus happened because Cube hates CLC and they were sabotaging the group, but no, not quite. The company was just a mess internally. You see, the year prior to CLC's debut, in 2014, Cube managed to get Rain to sign to the company. However, he did not sign to Cube directly, but to a subsidiary, Cube DC. Cube, being the greedy bastards that they are, decided to join together with Cube DC so that they could say that Rain was under them. In the midst of doing all of this, they lost another subsidiary, A Cube, because it was brought by Loan Entertainment, meaning the Cube had lost A Pink, a group that, while not super popular internationally, was very successful in Korea. Another thing that happened is that right before their comeback in February 2016, Cube moved to a different building, and they also bought another subsidiary in March 2016, this time Starlight Entertainment. They also opened another cafe. Now, all of these things didn't negatively affect the company except for, you know, the loss of A Pink, and the group was able to debut and have multiple comebacks. However, it does mean that a lot of money is being spent, which is not good once you realize what happened towards the second half of 2016. Around June, July, it was announced that 4Minute was not resigning, but Huna was continuing with the company. And then in October, it was announced that Beast was also leaving the company. In October as well, the company decided to debut a new group being Pentagon and Universal, who at the time owned 8% of Cube's shares and distributed their music, stepped aside. As you can see, the company had invested a lot of money in subsidiaries, new buildings, a cafe, the debut of a new group, while losing two of their biggest money makers. To put this into perspective, Beast accounted for 45% of the sales, and in 2016, the company's sales dropped by 13.1%, and the company closed the year with a 5.7 billion won loss. In the middle of all this chaos and financial instability, it only made sense for CLC not to have a comeback. 
Cube was in the red. They were losing money and CLC had not proven to be a profitable group yet. Still, Cube decided to use them to bring some sort of stability to the company and heard the girls out when they asked to change their concept. And so in December, Cube announced that the group would have a comeback in January and that they would have a new look and sound. In January, the girls came back with the album Crystal, which had six songs, including the title track Hop Gabolin, which had been written by Huna. Hop Goblin was definitely different from anything they had done before. It was a hip hop inspired girl crush concept, and it was actually very different from the other girl crush concepts that were coming out of the time. Because of this, they gained a lot of international attention. The album peaked at number 6 on the US World Digital Charts, and Hop Goblin peaked at number 4 on the World Digital Song Charts, with the song selling 9,000 downloads. In Korea, the album debuted on the Gaon album chart at number 30 with 3,975 sales, eventually getting to number 10 with 5,769 sales. Hot Goblin sold 12,921 downloads, which is less than their previous comeback, and picked a number 102 on the Gaon digital chart. So, as you can see, while this comeback was really good for their international image, it didn't do much for their image in the country. The sales and charting of the comeback was not much better than that of their previous comeback, and the public opinion was not really happy with it. Hyuna was getting dragged for quote unquote ruining the group, the girls were getting dragged for being a copy of 4 Minute, and their Korean fan, which was already small and consisted mostly of men because of their cute concept, started to shrink even more because they did not like this version of the group. So, Cube did what they thought made the most sense, and that was change their concept again. And so they did. And on August 3rd, the group came back with Frism, an album that had six songs, including the promotional single, Where Are You? <laughs> this change in concept didn't go well, because while the decision made sense, it was not a good decision. I mean, the Korean fans that left because of Hop Goblin did not come back because of Where Are You, and the fans that they gained because of Hop Goblin left because of Where Are You. Those who even found out that the girls had even had a comeback. Frism sold 4,355 copies and peaked at number 10 on the Gaon album chart, and number 16 on the US World album chart. Meanwhile, Where Are You did not chart any and I was unable to find any sales numbers. Something good that did come out of this comeback was I Like It, a B-side from the album that, that gained some attention in the international fandom, however, the song wasn't promoted and the only thing we got from it was a performance video. For the rest of the year, the group continued to promote by performing at festivals such as the Multicultural Music Festival. And so we closed the year 2017. On February 7th, 2018, it was announced that the group would have another comeback on February 27th. Black Dress had five songs, including the title track of the same name, Into the Sky, a promotional single that they had released in January. With this comeback, it seemed that the group had finally found a concept that really fitted their image. The album sold 8,016 copies and picked a number 12 on the Gaon album chart, and number 7 on the US World album chart. The song Black Dress peaked at number 5 on the US World Digital Song Chart. A few weeks later, in March, the group released Distance as a follow-up single. After this, in May, the group started to tease a new comeback on their social media by posting selfies with the red rose. Elki said that the group would be having a comeback around July or August. However, this comeback never happened, and it was later revealed that the comeback was supposed to be Lavi and Rose, the debut song from Ice One. After a video of the girls doing the choreography while the song sang by them played got leaked on social media. What I think happened was that the producers of the song, Moss Pick, left Cube after the girls recorded the song, and since I'm guessing Cube hadn't bought the song yet, they could sell it to whoever they wanted, and thus, CLC's recording was used as a demo for Ice One, and with this, the group spent the rest of the year doing nothing. Well, not nothing. 
While the group was in hiatus, Cube decided to give Elki a solo debut with the song I Dream, but they did not promote it and so it didn't do anything for her career or the career of the group. The group was on hiatus until January 30th, 2019, when they came back with number one, an album with five songs, including the title track, No, a song that was produced by Soyoung and written in part by Yoon. And with this song, the group finally struck gold. Number one became their highest selling album with 15,263 copies in Korea and 1,000 copies in the US. It peaked at number four on the Gaon album chart and number five on the US world album chart. No sold 1,000 downloads and peaked at number four on the US world digital song chart and also gave the group their first music show win as well as made it in into multiple end-year lists as one of the best K-pop songs of 2019. Four months later, the group came back with a single, Me, produced by Moshpik and written in part by Yoon. The song picked a number five on the US World Digital Song Chart seven months after its release thanks to the fact that it wasn't on iTunes until February 2020. Still, four months later, in September 2019, the group came back with yet another digital single, Devil, produced by Mick Hansen, who had previously worked with Little Mix and Katy Perry, and once again, lyrics from you. Lord, The song peaked at number 7 on the US Digital Song Chart five months after its release, once again because it was not available for purchase on iTunes. The song also peaked at number 154 on the Gowan Digital Charts, their first song to chart since Hopgoblin. The group ended the year performing at various festivals and holding their first concert. And then, in, in the midst of all of this activity, Nothing, just nothing. The group goes on yet another hiatus for a whole year. In August 2020, we finally got some news about the group when the company changed their logo and gave them official colors. This excited fans who had gotten nothing for almost a year and the group teased a comeback on their appearance on Weekly Idol. And so in September 2nd, the group released Helicopter, a two song digital album with the other song being an English version of Helicopter. On September 4th, it was reported that the song topped the iTunes Top Song Chart in 10 regions, including New Zealand, Mongolia, Bahrain, Bolivia, Brazil, Saudi Arabia, Slovenia, Estonia, Chile, and Cambodia, and placed 4th on the worldwide chart. Six days later, the song topped the chart in the 11th region, Hong Kong. On September 10th, it was reported that the group sold 12,834 physical copies in its first week, a figure over 3.5 times higher than CLC's previous first week sales record of 3,574 set by their EP number one, which they released in January 2019. The song also peaked at number six in the world digital charts and 116 on the Gaon download chart. This comeback became their most successful one with a total sales of 18,987. This is the most successful that CLC has ever been, and everybody thought that Cube would take this opportunity to push the group, not only because of the success, but also because of the apparent rebranding that they were planning for the group. All the company had to do was give them a comeback before the year ended with an album and continue to build the group up, but that didn't happen. In August 2020, Yoon took part of the Good Girl reality show alongside other idols, but it was revealed that Cube had nothing to do with this and it and it was the show's producers who reached out to her. She also had a popular song with Barbie and people wanted it to be released, but it never was. On December 25th, a letter was posted on Weibo in which Elke reportedly gave notification to Cube Entertainment through a law firm located in Beijing regarding the termination of her contract. It reportedly stated that after Elke signed a contract with Cube in February 2016 and joined CLC, she actively took part in promotions. The letter is said to describe that the company violated terms including regarding payments of her earnings as well as the agency not providing support for CLC's activities following the company's structural change, while also not giving a plan for Elke's activities. 
The letter went on to state that if the agency does not accept the termination, legal channels will be taken to protect the artist's rights and interests. On December 30th, Elke posted a letter to her Instagram account in Korean, Chinese, and English, in which she thanks her fans and the members of the group. On February 2021, Cube announced that Elke's contract had been terminated and she was no longer a part of the company. In March 2021, Soar made her solo debut, but it was revealed that Cube didn't support her at all. She was the one who contacted the producers, the videographers, came up with the video concept, the TikTok challenge, and the art for the single cover. And Soar mentioned that if she didn't hit 5 million, she would not be allowed to continue her solo endeavors in the company. In June 2021, it was announced that Jujin would be taking part of the competition show Girls Planet 999, which had the goal of creating a girl group. During her introduction, she stated that the group had been dismissed by the company, leading to fans believing that the group is all but disbanded. Lucky for Jujin, she made it to the top 9 and will be making her debut with Kepler on January 3rd, 2022. In November 2021, Sorn announced that she was leaving the company, becoming the second member to do so, and I guess now we just have to wait for the other members' contracts to be up and see who, if anyone, stays in the company and who leaves. I think the biggest problem plaguing CLC and even other cube groups is that the company doesn't seem to have a set idea of what they want to do with them when they debut them. I believe personally that at least the first two years of a group's career should be structured like heavily planned in advance because those are really good years. And it didn't seem like you had any idea what they were doing with CLC. They just debuted the group and then were just figuring it out as it went. And that's not a good business plan. That's really dumb. I think that something similar is happening to Lightsome. Like their debut concept and their first comeback are not the same. I, this doesn't mean that I think Lightsome is going to end up like CLC. I don't think they will. But it shows that the company is just debuting groups without having a set plan in mind. G Idol didn't suffer of this thanks to Soyeon and the fact that she's the main writer and producer for the group and therefore her music is bound to have a similar sound, you know, that is cohesive. But if it wasn't for her, I'm pretty sure that, yeah, they would also be changing concepts like crazy all the time because you does not know what the hell they're doing. Ultimately, I don't think Cube was purposefully sabotaging the group. I don't think Cube wanted them to fail or something. I think that they are just not really smart and they count on luck for things like the success of a group. They did a lot of very stupid decisions that what made seem logical at first, if you think about them for a little bit longer, you would see they wouldn't work. Like, for example, changing their concept from hobgoblin to where are you? That was a logical decision, but it was very stu stupid and didn't know what they were doing with this group in advance. They did not have a plan. And so this is what you end up having. The group didn't even have a stable image that you could look at and say, oh, yeah, that's CLC until the girls got involved with a black dress. That's the, that's the conclusion of this video. This, what happened to CLC, is what happens when a company doesn't know what they're going to do with the group when they do not plan in advance well guys that was today's video i hope you enjoyed it let me know what you think of all of this and i'll see you in the next one bye